It's funny how things go from one thing to another. January 2020, everybody had high hopes. Living their best life and having fun. And then, boom. Everything cancelled. Suddenly, everything you had worked so hard on over the past year was ripped away. A musical you had spent four months on and seven days before opening night, cancelled. A project for a national business competition that you'd spent over 100 hours over the course of five months slaving over. Cancelled. An internship at an overnight camp cancelled. Trips to Montreal and Costa Rica cancelled. Everything cancelled. The world shut down. But this was no war, no battle we could fight, no enemy we could even sway to surrender. There was nothing anyone could do. Stuck inside, stuck thinking about everything that was ripped away in just a matter of 24 hours. The countless hugs and laughs started to seem like distant memories. Everyone's excitement for the future became a longing for the past. Instead of running up to someone you knew at the grocery store and talking to them, everyone was running away, desperately trying to grab that last roll of toilet paper without touching another soul. The world as we knew it was falling apart, and there was nothing anyone could do. Cancel, 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 cancel. On the very first day, 2020, I thought the year would be fine. Now the virus is here to ruin our cheer. Still, we're not gonna whine. The streets are empty, not a car to be seen. We've got a social distance while we are in quarantine. Cancel, cancel, activities we have planned. Cancel, cancel. Cancelled, cancelled, activities we had planned. Cancelled, cancelled, and we can't touch hand in hand. Cancelled, cancelled, how long's quarantine? Cancelled, cancelled, and our home from COVID 19. Cancelled, cancelled! Okay, um, this is my video for Miss Downer's English class. We have to submit a video of ourselves talking about how our quarantine is going and stuff like that, so here goes, I guess. Um, I've become a stranger to myself. Every day is the same. I wake up, I don't eat breakfast, and you might not know this about me, but I love food. Pre-COVID, I would eat non-stop, or at least I used to, but I just haven't really been hungry. My appearance these days is um, less than stellar. On a good day, I'll brush my hair and get dressed. Good days don't come often enough. <laughs> I mean, look. Look at all of these pretty clothes. And for some reason, I choose to wear the same three pairs of sweatpants in rotation. And all of these shoes. Look at them. They're just sitting here. Collect them best. They're being neglected. It really hurts my heart. It does. But there's not a good reason to wear high-heeled boots around the house. Oh, um, you can probably see some of my paintings. Did these myself before COVID. Um, I love painting. I don't consider myself to be amazing or anything, but I really love painting. Like, see this? Um, I can't do anything realistic, like, at all, and I don't really have a specific genre. It's kind of just whatever I'm feeling that day. Well, that day when it was normal for me to paint at least once a week. And now the thought of picking up a brush, it doesn't really cross my mind. <laughs> I was productive. At one point. I decorated my room. See? <laughs> Look how cute. I loved it. <clears throat> loved. Past tense. 
<laughs> after being trapped here for two months, it's just become the same candles, same walls, same uncomfortable bed. <laughs> Where did my productivity go? You know, I used to complain I never had enough time to try new things. Well, now I have all the time in the world, and I just can't bring myself to do anything. I would say I want to knit or learn sign language even. Well, there's nothing stopping me from doing those things. I think the real question is where has my drive gone? You know, before this I did things. I talked to people. I would go for walks and bike rides. My mom could ask me if I wanted to go to the grocery store and I would say yes. Now I'm just kind of here. It's harder when the house falls asleep. It's lonelier, my friends aren't always awake. TV tends to get boring after a while. <laughs> Hundreds of shows, and I still can't find one. <laughs> and there's no fictional character who can save me from my own thoughts. No, each day this routine gets more and more draining, but who knows? Maybe tomorrow will be better. Buy your Corona Essentials and Corona Necessities at the Quarantine Sweet Shop. Quarantine Sweet Shop. Quarantine Sweet Shop. Bye now. Nobody planned on being stuck in their homes 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. But here we are. So you might as well make your home a place you want to be and that is suitable for your new life. But what does it take to create a quarantine home without breaking the bank? Some creativity, spirit, and of course, a mask. Over to you, Bridget. Thanks, Stacy. First, let's talk about food. Most people remember the necessities. Fruits, vegetables, meat, blah, blah, blah. But a real quarantine home requires sweets, brownies, ice cream, chocolates galore. Purchase our sweets deluxe package for only $20. Cousin Truth, now is not the time to be spending money you don't have. Not on healthy foods at least. Now on to Blaine to see what he has in store for our home. Thank you, Bridget. Now on to the look of your home. It's time for spring cleaning. Actually, forget that. Bring on the fuzzy blankets and let your inner hoarder shine through. Cause in all this isolation, the last thing you need is time away from your junk. I mean, valuable items. We have the softest, fuzziest gear around for your cuddling enjoyment, all for $29.99. And don't forget to gather up your board games and gather your family for a night of fun. Purchase this entertainment package to avoid harming your loved ones during the global pandemic. Buy this bag of fun for the low price of $34.75. Get real, Blaine. You have all the time in the world and you're going to spend it with the ones you're forced to live with? Yeah, um, no. Socially distance yourself right out of family time. Order our latest and most advanced technology for the low price of only $30. Blast that music and stay in bed all day long. With our fuzzy blankets, you'll never want to leave. Get comfy. Don't waste your quarantine time organizing and getting healthy. No one has time for health during a global pandemic. Great point, Bridget. Can't decide? Get all of these quarantine necessities for the low, low price of $100 plus shipping and handling. This bundle saves you a whopping $15 at the Quarantine Sweet Shop, online shopping only. What are you waiting for? Order now! Your quarantine dream home supplies await. Just grab your credit card and in a few clicks you'll be all set. You can trust me. I have a degree in home design from the University of... Well, a great university. Right here in the U.S. of A. Call now. 1-800-SHOP-NOW. Must be 18 years or older to order. Quarantine Sweet Shop. Quarantine Sweet Shop. Bye now.
and caged, trapped, not able to leave. I'm a prisoner of cloth within my own world. When I go to leave, the cloth encases around my face, a bounding barrier that makes it hot and hard to breathe, chained and held down by new rules and curfews. Everywhere you turn, having plastic plexiglass pose a problem in your stores and restaurants, I am not only a prisoner confined to my own home, but the whole world is too. The world has grown silent and cold. No hugging, kissing, seeing, and being together. The home I used to know was once filled with happiness and laughter. Now our town streets are ugly bare. Stores are closed, restaurants empty. Litter of takeout napkins, soiled gloves, discarded mask fill our streets. Instead of children playing and people rushing to their destinations, it's the only remnants of what and who used to be there. These rules of quarantine were meant to keep us safe, but no one can tell us when this will end. Is it near? Will I get my life back? Boom! The TV news goes on and on. Perpetually prominent political propaganda. Fear strikes my world. My hope is gone. Starting new, having better days, seems so far out of my reach. Going out with friends, spending time with loved ones, with this cloth suffocating me. Letting people flee, or the world turning from love to hate, having peace to a sudden war. What is going on? Oh, I can feel sadness, anger, helplessness, loneliness, and being afraid of what the world has become. But there's one glimpse of hope left. Hope of one day living in a world without this cloth or pain, seeing everyone again smiling and laughing. I will rise above this cloth, embrace it, for this cloth isn't my cage but my new way of finding freedom. Last night, my grandma ate my Girl Scout cookies. She didn't eat them all, but she left them open and now they're staler than my heart. The thing is, she didn't ruin just any Girl Scout cookies. She destroyed my no longer so thanks a lot Girl Scout cookies. She even had the audacity to pull the sun off not a week after she devoured my personal peanut butter ice cream. I kept my mouth shut then, but I don't think I can now. After all, my ice cream can be replaced, but my thanks a lots? They're gone forever. Now all that fuels me is the sadness that comes to the loss of my precious bite-sized bits of heaven. They don't even taste good in milk. I mourn you, my shortbread, chocolate-dipped pieces of perfection. The silence at the dinner table tonight was deafening. I sat there with my mouth glued shut as I watched my grandma bring end to even more food. I started to casually mention the carnage that befell my cookies, but my raging anguish was swiftly repressed by my mother, saying, Grandma doesn't know any better. As if. Now all I have to say to you, Grandma, is thanks a lot for eating my thanks a lots. One thing I've been doing way too much since quarantine started last spring is watching movies. They are the easiest way of passing time. At this point, I'm a walking movie guide to my family. Whether you're looking for a rom-com or an action-packed film, there is a good chance I will know a title to recommend. Netflix should honestly consider sponsoring me. During the pandemic, one movie I watched was I Am Legend, a great movie about an isolated doctor named Robert Neville with his dog as his only friend who is immune to the zombie virus apocalypse wiping out humans. The movie stars Will Smith, a brilliant actor who also plays a role in the famous Men in Black series. 
I guess what struck me about I Am Legend is that it eerily resembles what's going on in the world with COVID-19 today. Everyone locked in their house. Some people are so pale they look like zombies. Everything feels like it might be contaminated. We're trying not to get sick. We're looking for a, vi a vaccine. When Dr. Neville goes outside, he needs to stay in the light to avoid the zombies attacking him. When I go outside, I need to wear a mask to avoid COVID-19 attacking me. I hold my breath even when I'm wearing a mask. While Dr. Neville is searching for other surviving humans, we are all searching for toilet paper and hand sanitizer. I cannot imagine life without hand sanitizer. I hope you stocked up because I cannot find it anywhere. Cut to last spring. Before all the Lysol spraying, hand sanitizing, mask wearing, and general germophobia. It felt like a never ending spring break. If you're unaware of what kids do over spring break, let me inform you. Lots of Netflix, napping, and eating. No school, no teachers, no extracurricular activities, and no waking up at unexplainable times. At first it was brand new, like a shiny new toy on Christmas Eve for a five-year-old. But now, eight months later, kids want to go back to school, to socialize, to be somewhere other than in our rooms alone. Humans are meant to be together, talking, laughing, sharing, hugging, and being social. Dr. Neville knows what I'm talking about. He was alone with his dog, searching for other survivors and left to create a cure for the zombie virus. In the end, Dr. Neville developed a vaccine and shared it. <sighs> a cure or a vaccine. I just hope that happens in our world really soon so we can return to our normal. Dear COVID, you really messed with everyone. On March 13th, when the governor of Pennsylvania announced that we would be in quarantine, all I could think of is yay. This would be the break that I needed. I was a junior in high school and I was continually moving. I was running down a crowded one-way street with no end in sight. I never had time to myself or moments to relax. I thought that this two-week break would help me slow down, but that two-week break turned into an eight-month one, longer than any of us had expected. With that came challenges and lots of Zoom calls. The events that I looked forward to were either canceled or through a screen. This past year, I served as the membership vice president for the Pennsylvania area region for my youth group. And I wanted to expand my commitment this year and run for president. When it came to what that election would look like, it was a difficult adjustment. After the stressful weeks leading up to the election, my world halted when I found out that I had lost. I was faced with a mountain of an obstacle and I wasn't ready to climb it. I couldn't stop crying and I fell into a dark place. My family and friends tried to help, but the only person that could get me out of this rut was myself. I had to stop dwelling in the past and try to move forward. That's definitely easier said than done. The next thing I had to do was find a little bit of joy, take a step back and focus on me. Life keeps moving no matter the obstacles in your way. The only thing that we can do is climb over that mountain knowing that it'll all be okay one day. COVID, you have definitely changed me and I will never forget this experience. Sincerely, Shana Salzberg. Good morning, everyone. Okay, class, I'm just waiting another minute or two to let people in. Can you buy eggs from the market on your way home from work, honey? I used the last three for my omelet this morning. <laughs> I think you're unmuted, Jake. We just heard your dad's grocery wish list. Sorry, Mr. Greco, I'll mute myself right now. Thanks, Jake. All right, can everyone turn their cameras on and mute their microphones, please? We are going to get started for the day. Uh, Mr. Greco, my video is not working today, so I can't turn it on. Well, okay, that's fine, Tori. Um, Aubrey, I can't see your face. All I see is your ceiling fan. Um, is that better, Mr. Greco? No, I can only see your forehead now. Hello? Can anyone hear me? I can't hear anything right now. Tori, we can hear you. Try logging off of the Zoom and coming back on. Oh, wait, you can't hear me. I'll write that in the chat. Honey, I need 
toilet paper. Can you grab me one of those really soft rolls? I think those fiber one bars are kicking in. Oh, wow. You're unmuted again, Jake. Sounds like your dad's having a little trouble over there. Aubrey, I still can't see your face. Please fix your camera so I can see you, not the top of your head. Sorry, Mr. Greco, but I am just not here for today. What does that even mean, Aubrey? You are here for today, for this class. Please put the makeup away till later. No one will hear will judge you for not wearing it. I might. And you're 10 minutes late to class. Sorry, Mr. Greco, but you see, I got to start in the 10.15, not 10. And then I had to feed my dog, brush my hair, and check my Instagram. Oh, and go to the bathroom. I'm sorry, Anne. I'm going to have to mark you late. Make sure you go check him to see what you missed already today. <laughs> Which is nothing. Excuse me? Do you have something you want to say to me, Todd? <laughs> Not a thing, Mr. Greco, sir. Jake, you're muted. I can't hear you. Jake, you're muted. I can't hear you. Wait, sorry. Where's the slide presentation for today? Right. I'm going to share it now. Thanks, Jake. No okay, problem. Okay, everyone. Today, we are learning about the organelles of the cell. Honey, I can't find my phone. Can you call it? Jake. You're unmuted, again. Uh, Mr. G, hi! Yeah, I can't see what you're sharing. Please, just give me a second. Take your time, Mr. Greco. I haven't even finished putting on my makeup yet. Put that mascara down, Aubrey, and refocus your camera on your face. Mr. Greco, can I go to the bathroom? I really need to go. Man, did you just tell me you were late because you went to the bathroom? Oh, yeah. But I need to go again. Lovely. Justin? Are you even here? Justin? See a dark screen for no Justin? Well, I guess I'll have to mark him absent. <laughs> Todd? What are you laughing about? No, nothing. Sorry. <laughs> Stop laughing and refocus yourself, Todd. Aubrey, if you absolutely have to do your makeup. Please turn off your camera. It is very distracting. No, I can't. Then I won't be able to see my face and I'll look like a clown. Do you want a clown on this Zoom call? Did I hear clowns? Where? Jakey, you know I'm terrified of clowns. My God, Dad, stop. You're so embarrassing. There are no clowns here. And please turn off your mic, Jake. OMG, I'm also scared of clowns. I think I saw them when I was walking my dog. Everyone, stop. Stop walking right now. Perfect. Okay, let's get back to business. Anyway, this is the mitochondria. Uh, Mr. G, I didn't hear you right. Did you say endoplasmic reticulo? No, no, I did not, Tori. Hey, where did Aubrey go? Hey, I'm in the bathroom fixing my smudged mascara and blush. <sighs> I honestly don't care anymore. Justin, are you here yet? No? Great. Moving on, class. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Hello, my name is Justin. Just in time for an epic Zoom bomb. Get out of my class. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's so funny. Okay, fine. I'll show it to you if you let me share my screen. <laughs> See? Roses are red. I'm Groot. Honey, where is my super suit? <laughs> Happy now, Mr. Grosso. See me after class, Todd. Know what? I'm fine. Bye. See you later, Aubrey. Jakey, are you still on the zoo? I tried mom casserole and it's giving me garlic burn. Oh my god, Dad, stop. I am so sorry if you hear my dog barking in the back. He wants to go on another walk. And Aubrey, what's going on with you and Todd? Aubrey and Todd? 
Uh, Mr. G, I think you kicked me out the Zoom call instead of that Zoom bomber, but I'm back. What did I miss? I was going to get to that. Sorry, I lied. This isn't Justin. This is Norma Lee. Norma Lee, I'd be in school, but today I'm too busy Zoom bombing your class, Mr. Grosso. LOL, LOL. I'm sorry, class. We have a very annoying and rude intruder today. And as I said before, get out of my class. Hey, I'm back, y'all. How do I look? Ah, clown! Ah, I'm scared, Jakey! Ah! Corbury, wow, that looks fine. Now pay attention. Relax, buddy. It's only Aubrey. She just looks like a clown. Actually, she is a clown. Anne, what did you just call me? A clown. I mean, you do. You look like one. If we weren't on Zoom right now, I would be coming for you. Ugh, Aubrey, you're so annoying. It's only a joke. Like your face. Stop arguing, you two, and see me after class. Now look what you've done. We're in trouble now. You started it with Todd. Girls! What's all the commotion up there? Jake, are you dancing to TikTok videos without me again? Of course not, Dad. I'd never make a TikTok without you. Ribosomes? What are we even learning today? Dun, 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 dun. This is why Todd dumped you for me, Anne. He didn't dump me. I dumped him, clown. Hi, everyone. I'm Turnip. I have to turn up for school or I'm in trouble. Welp, it's too late for that. Okay, that's it. I'm putting you all on mute. All right. Now, that's better. Okay, everyone. So, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Wait. Hello? Can I just end the class instead of muting everyone? Okay, forget this. They don't pay me enough to deal with this. Hi. I know I haven't shared anything in a while. It's been a crazy few months. But something happened and I thought I would share it. I've never considered myself to be an angry person. Sure, I get pissed off or mad when the situation calls for it, but I never thought angry was one of my core personality traits. One thing quarantine provided for everyone was time. Time to think, time to feel, time to remember. I spent my time immersing myself in fictional worlds, I guess in an attempt to escape the scariness of our reality. But unlike other people I knew, I wasn't trying to improve myself or grow as a person, at least not intentionally. One day, about halfway through summer, I received a text message. Mind you, I hadn't talked to this person in over a year, not to mention, the last time we saw each other, we didn't exactly part amicably, at least on my part. This person laid everything on the table. They apologized for all the harm they caused me and hoped I could see them with grace. At first, I was skeptical. This girl had apologized before, but they were all lies. How was I to know this one was genuine? And even if she was telling the truth, would that really change anything? The thing is, there was no way I could truly get answers to those questions. So for the first time since quarantine, I looked inward. And you know what I felt deep in my chest? An ache. The sort of ache you think went away years ago, but turns out is still there. The sort of ache that manifests in anger, in, can you believe she did that to me? The sort of ache that, at its core, is just a ball of pain. Pain that burdens you until you can't even feel the weight on your shoulders. But I didn't want that weight anymore. 
I never realized it before, but it was exhausting, unknowingly giving that ache energy and fuel it didn't need. So I knew the only way to truly let go of my pain was not to forget, it was to forgive. Now forgiveness, I discovered, doesn't have to mean I'll ignore and forget all the pain you caused me and we can reconcile, like I always thought it was. My forgiveness, the forgiveness I gave this girl, was me letting go of my anger toward her. It was me saying, you can't control how I feel any longer. And as soon as I let that pass over and through me, day by day, the ache grew smaller and smaller. And maybe one day, whether it be weeks or years from now, it will finally disappear. Now, of course we know COVID is awful. Running to social distance, preparing for the worst, quarantining the instant something is off. Kind of like a game I've been playing called Among Us, where there's one to three imposters. The imposters go around, try to kill the crewmates, and the crewmates do task and try to vote off the imposter by figuring out who's sus or suspicious. It's got me thinking, what if COVID-19 was among us? Well, we're all gathered here together now. What do you think, White? Is the virus imposter among us? Well, well, I don't know. Pink wasn't maintaining social distancing, and I got scared. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. I was with Yellow. Yeah, I was next to Pink the whole time. Uh, no, I was following Yellow around, so I'm pretty sure she is the virus. Okay, okay, everyone settle down. No one was, uh, acting up. Where was everyone at this point in time? At the store, buying foods for quarantine. I was with Yellow because I was finished checking internet for Zoom classes. And I was setting up the TV for Netflix, because it's pretty much the only thing we can do to pass the time during quarantine. Uh, I was buying masks until Pink followed me and got kind of close, so I ran to the emergency button. I was cleaning and DIYing the rooms. Okay, well, who do we think the virus imposter is? Well, I would ask Green and Blue, but their bodies aren't in the rooms because they have the virus, and social distancing is important since they are infected. Funny you should mention them, Red, because Green was in the TV room, right where you were. Are you trying to say that I did it? I think it's Yellow. She's pretty sus. Maybe we should vote out Purple. He's making a few too many assumptions. Could be Orange. She seems to act like an expert. Hold it! Yes, Yellow, I remember seeing Pink and Blue in Electrical. I decided to walk in a few seconds later, and Blue was on the ground, and Pink was nowhere to be seen, meaning that it could have been a vent infect. Uh, yeah, now that you mention it, when Pink reported Green's body, he wasn't wearing a mask, and now he seems pretty sus. Uh, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Pink, quick question. Yes, Orange? Why didn't you say where you were? Uh, um... Uh, I still think it's yellow. She's very sus. Uh, I think it's pink. I think we know who the virus is. I'll get you next time. Wait, there's another imposter? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I knew it! Hey, Tilly. Looks like you made some progress on that desk. You know, it's... Almost done, somewhat, I think. And you've got paint on the wall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, these are the final two colors, I think. <laughs> Which one do you like better? Where's that one color I picked out? Uh, this one? No. Maybe I haven't looked closely enough at these. Now, where is this supposed to go? It's supposed to go over here. No. Oh, I grabbed the wrong piece. It's this one. Hmm. Okay. Think I got it. Hmm. Okay. Think this is it. How in the world do they expect me to be able to make a decision like this? 
This is a decision that will stay with me for the rest of my life! Um, hello? Did you just completely ignore that giant thud? Oh my gosh, are you alright? I'm fine. Hey, how's that desk going? You know, it's going. How about your paint colors? Yeah, I think I'm getting somewhere. You know, I think this would be easier if you just came over and helped me. Actually, I was thinking you should come over here and help me. You would love the smell of this paint. Ugh! Why is this so hard? This is impossible! And it's just pictures. Pictures! I think someone else should have done this. You know, I thought quarantine would help me to accomplish things, not make it harder. Why do I have to make these decisions? Hey! Do you think this is right? <gasps> um, hello? Sorry, I'm actually really busy. Doing what? Watching paint dry? I am taking a critical life step in interior design. Yes, and while you do that, I'm over here doing physical labor. I'm doing mental labor. We're pathetic. The Property Brothers made this look so easy! Oh yeah, it's not like the Property Brothers are licensed contractors. Why does IKEA only include pictures in their instructions? What am I supposed to do with a picture? Ugh. Pain samples have become the bane of my existence. Wait, I think I got it. <gasps> Wait, if this goes here, then... <gasps> oh my gosh! I did it! I'm done! It's finally over! Hey, you want to go get some food? Um, I have goldfish. Correction, I had goldfish. Uh, do you want to go to Panera? I heard they allowed in-person dining again. Okay, don't forget a mask. Back in April, I almost felt guilty complaining about not being able to see friends or go to school. People in this world had and continue to have no guarantee that there would be a roof over their heads or a meal on their table at night. And here I was getting frustrated and cranky about not being able to leave my incredibly well-built and reliable house. However, as time went on and the days of being trapped alone became seemingly endless, it became really challenging to face what I was going through. All I wanted to do was complain and share my struggles, regardless of the adversities being felt by others around the world. I remember a night in May, I was, I was talking to a friend, and I brought up the fact that I was having a really hard time talking about what I was thinking and it was buzzing in my mind. To that, he responded this. He said, your struggles are valid. Now at the time I have to admit, it felt like a really simple sentence with close to no meaning at all. But as time has progressed, it has become this proverb that lives in my mind. It has reminded me that it is so important for me to talk about what I'm going through and what I'm experiencing, no matter how small, and no matter what others are going through as well. It's important not to make my conscious guilty, but to clear my mind. And I have to admit, I am far from the end and far from where I wanna be, but I am so much closer than I would have been without a pandemic. Hello everybody and welcome to COVID's Kitchen. This is a very special episode because we have decided for all of our contestants to cook in separate sets for their safety because of the coronavirus pandemic. Today I am joined by a few special contestants. Tell us a little bit about yourselves. Hello, my name is Jean-Luc and I have been cooking since I was birthed out of my mother's womb with a frying pan. Just to show you how masterful of a chef I am, my signature dish combines Wagyu beef, caviar, and lobster. 
I've spent 15 years studying under the best chefs in Western Europe. I came here to win because I am the best chef there is. So this is going to be a cake fuck. Hi, I'm Karen. I may have just started my cooking career four months ago, but my kids love my food. My dinners are gone in milliseconds. I have faith that I will win the $10,000 reward with my outstanding cooking skills. Wait, this is a cooking show? I thought this was Jeopardy. Um, well, my name is Amanda, and I don't know how to cook. My most gourmet meal are those pizza bagels you put in the microwave. I know when George Washington's best friend was born, but what the hell is Edemane? Well, I think that contestant three's in the wrong studio, but I guess they're stuck here now. Now, to introduce our lovely judges panel. Up first is judge number one. Hi everyone, I'm Lily, and I am so excited to be a judge of COVID's Kitchen. I wish you all the best of luck, and just to know if I could give each of you the $10,000 reward, I would. Thanks, Lily. Our next judge is the notorious Jordan Bamsey. Don't ruin my day with your bad cooking. Yeah, he's going to be a tough cookie to crack for our contestants. Now, on to our final judge, Biff Wellington. I'm excited yet apprehensive for the contestants here today. Let's hope you all do swell. And that's a wrap on introductions, folks. Now onto our first round, Rona Recipes. For those of you who are new, in Rona Recipes, our contestants are given a basket filled with quarantine snacks. Anything from expired milk to hot Cheetos could be in store for our contestants. Chefs will then have 30 minutes to create their most illustrious dishes with the ingredients provided. And time starts now. Alex, where's the buzzer? What do you mean? There is no buzzer. What do you mean, no buzzer? What else am I supposed to do? It seems like Karen is super comfortable with her dish. I'm so excited to try what she's making for us. Uh-oh. It looks like contestant one is really struggling. Time is up. Chef, step away from your stations. While the dishes are being transported to the judges via drones, let's hear what our contestants have made. Contestant one, what have you prepared for us this evening? <laughs> I, I have prepared for you. <laughs> are you okay? No, I had no idea what to make. Where are the Doritos? I ate them! All I have is some marshmallows! I found some mac and cheese! <laughs> well, this is absolute garbage! You did absolutely nothing with the ingredients given! You are a disgrace to the culinary art! Now, on to Karen. Today, I have made a beautiful Dorito uncrusted mac and cheese with a deconstructed marshmallow fluff ensemble. I hope you enjoy it! Wow. This tastes delicious. <laughs> really gives me that home cook feel. Great job, chef. Well, that definitely lifts the mood. Now, on to our final dish of the round. What is mac and cheese on a plate of Doritos and marshmallows? This is a simplistic but very intricate dish. I thoroughly enjoyed the presentation, but it also made me want to puke at the same time. Okay then. We now send our contestants into a waiting room while the judges deliberate. Woo! 
All of the contestants have returned, and the judges have come to a decision about who will be eliminated. All of you shouldn't be allowed to step foot in a kitchen, but since we can only eliminate one of you, we have decided on... Contestant 1, I'm sorry. You've been 19 You will now be kicked from the Zoom call. Are you tired of suffocating in your sweaty mask after a long run? Already over forgetting you have a mask on when you reach for your drink? We have the perfect solution for you. Introducing the Porous Protector, the world's finest breathable mask. This super comfortable mask uses the newest mesh technology allowing for maximum breathability. It's great for taking a brisk walk in the neighborhood. It's almost like you're not wearing a mask at all. That's right. The Porous Protector allows you to do all of the things a normal mask prevents you from doing. Enjoy a nice cool beverage on a hot summer's day. And no one freaks out because I don't even have to take my mask off. Don't let COVID spoil your special day. Okay, son. The Porous Protector is the solution to all your COVID problems. With the Porous Protector, you'll be able to breathe freely again. Order your Porous Protector today for just $19.99 plus shipping and handling. And with this limited time offer, call now and receive a second Porous Protector free. Just call 1-800-PROTECT. Again, that's 1-800-PROTECT. This product does not prevent the spread of the coronavirus or any other airborne disease. The Colonial players are not liable for any illness contracted while wearing this product. Must be 18 years old or older to order. All masks sold separately. Last time on COVID's Kitchen. <laughs> Alex, where's the buzzer? But it also made me want to puke at the same time. Contestant 1, I'm sorry. You've been 19. <laughs> it is now the moment you have all been waiting for where we will announce the winner of COVID's Kitchen. Judges, it's time. I think contestant three has created a brilliant dish compared to contestant two's. I don't want to be a hater, but it did not impress me. I would have rather eaten a meal at McDonald's than judge this competition. I don't give a <laughs> about who wins. The judges have decided, and the winner of COVID's Kitchen is... And the winner of the $10,000 reward is... Contestant 3, Amanda, you did an absolutely splendid job. Congratulations. Oh my god, I won? Is this? I want to speak to the manager. So, Contestant 3, what are you going to do with your reward? I'm going to win Jeopardy. That's what I wanted to do in the first place. And that's a wrap, folks. See you next time on COVID's Kitchen. Guess who's back with another rant? COVID-19 is the most inconvenient thing that has ever happened to me and every other person on this earth. Where do I begin? You don't get to see your friends and family in person. You have to have birthday parades instead of birthday parties. You eat the same food all the time. You get sick of how your room looks, so you rearrange it 15 times, not to mention virtual school. With the Zooms and the bad internet connection and the awkward breakout rooms, you literally have no choice to leave during quarantine. This virus took so much from people. It took away the things that people had poured their hearts and souls into. For example, a school musical that you worked so hard on for six months. Out of the blue, the thing you were most looking forward to in life was taken away from you, like that. I cried for so many hours thinking about how much this virus was going to affect my life. And that was back when quarantine would only last for two weeks. Two weeks turned into one month, one turned into two, then the end of the school year, 
And we are now on our ninth month of not normal. I wish COVID never happened. Actually, maybe that's not true. There are things about COVID I wish never happened. It is a serious tragedy that left thousands of people to die, others stranded away from home, and many people harmed and scared, but I feel like it helped people change in a positive way. Wait, there's this one quote I wrote down. Let me find it. You never understand the true value of something until it becomes a memory. COVID has helped me realize not to take anything for granted. Well, that's all. Bye. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Colonial Players Quarantine Update. I'm Grant Schubin. And I'm Nathan Sedacian. NASA recently spent $23 million developing a new space toilet, so your galactic bowel movements can be out of this world. Adult playgrounds have been pooping up, I mean popping up all across the country. Get your mind out of the gutter, seesaws and roundabouts. Production of The Walking Dead started in October. I guess all of the zombie makeup won't be necessary after all of their actors drop like flies due to the coronavirus. Nicki Minaj recently gave birth to her first child, rapper 6 9 overdosed on diet pills, and Donald Trump was diagnosed with COVID-19, all within the same 24 hours. I haven't heard this many things happen in one sentence since I listened to We Didn't Start the Fire. Speaking of fires, as many of you are aware, California has been on fire since the beginning of 2020. These fires have destroyed over 3.2 million acres of land, left 24 people dead, and over 4,200 structures destroyed. The most recent fire, the El Dorado, was believed to have been started by a smoke-generating pyrotechnic device at a couple's gender reveal party. What? Anyway, we have a lovely guest who we'd love to introduce. Everyone give a warm welcome to the stage, Carol Baskin. Welcome, Miss Baskin. How's it going tonight? Hey, all you cool cats and kittens. It's me, Carol Baskin. I'm doing just great, Grant. So, Miss Baskin, your TV show Tiger King was a huge hit over quarantine. How has this new fame affected your life? It is so real, I'll tell you. Never did I think this little old film about cats would become so popular. And everyone seemed to become so invested in your story while they were sitting at home. Yeah, yeah, I'm just so surprised people enjoyed it so much. Carol, there, did you know that there's a wild theory going around about the possibility that you killed your husband and fed him to your tigers? What? Now why would people think this? Well, in an interview you said, and I quote, If I were gonna, you know, if somebody wanted to kill you, they'd spit sardine oil all over you. What do you have to say about that? Well, that sounds kind of fishy. That was just a silly little something I said. I didn't exactly mean it. And what about this cryptic and ominous caption? I can't believe I spent a year with this cool cat. Can't wait to spend the rest of his life with him. Hmm? Well, that, that was just an error in my typing, that's all. I see. <clears throat> well, What's next for you in the coming years? I know this pandemic has been quite the hassle for you. Oh, not that much. Did you see me on Dancing with the Stars? I did a simply phenomenal job. And they can get this, all of the songs were cat related. I mean, isn't that genius? Isn't that perfect? Cause you know, Tiger King and the cats and it's the eye of the tiger, it's the thrill of the All right, the all right. Thank you very much, Miss Baskin. I hope you have a wonderful night. Toodles. Thanks, Carol. Now, cats, in other news. Following the global pandemic, killer insects and hail began plaguing the nation. This was shortly followed by a large swarm of locusts over northern Africa, 
What's next? A plague upon the firstborn children of each family? Get out your lamb's blood. Speaking of plagues, as if the coronavirus wasn't enough, new cases of the bubonic plague have been popping up from Las Vegas to China. This plague is bubonic. B U B O N I C. A town in Switzerland was recently coated in a layer of cocoa powder after an error at a chocolate factory. Is this the beginning of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 3? <laughs> A family in Ireland just won the lottery after using the same set of numbers for the last 25 years. I guess they finally found their pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. A couple in Australia won the Guinness World Record for the world's heaviest blueberry. This record having been previously set by Violet Beauregard. Thank you all for watching. This has been the Colonial Players Quarantine Update. Have a great night everyone. to choke The same four walls are starting to crumble I try to run I fall and fumble Thoughts creep back in like poison smoke My brain's committing genocide I tried to run, I can't hide The glass tomb which I'm trapped in starts to burn Outside the glass wall they throw stones A newfound emotion creeps up my throat Mindless anger, mindless rage This glass tomb is my broken stage One last plea for help and that's all she wrote Empty sighs in a freezing room Hollow bones in a glass tomb I try to explain it But the words never come I'm left all alone feeling starts to eat me whole this diamond's now a piece of coal i feel tarnished my purpose is depleted the stars above are not aligned my eyes are open yet i am blind 
the fight that I once had has been defeated. Empty sighs in a freezing room. Oh, girls, I want to make sure all of you are wiping down your groceries before bringing them into the house. I have extra gloves and weights if anybody needs them. Of course. Mm -hmm. Wiping down groceries is the wave. Everybody who's anybody should be doing it. I have an entire vegan and cruelty-free setup to decontaminate in my garage. I even strip down and change my clothes before going into the house. That's a little cray-cray. Mom, do you have any toilet paper at your house? Of course. I just went out and bought out six stores last night. The manager tried to stop me, but then I had to remind him who I was. No one refuses a colonial. I need some for my house, but mostly to TP Courtney's house. Cool. What did you say? I'm totally engrossed in this dairy-free, gluten-free, calorie-free, taste-free cookbook I just found online. Oh, nothing, Courtney. You'll find out my surprise later. <laughs> sure, Chloe, honey. I can go out and buy a couple more stores. Oops. <laughs> I meant restock. We certainly do not need to own any more stores. Just their TP. What are we going to do with all of this additional time we have? Oh, don't worry, Courtney. I still have my contacts. I can get a camera for you girls anytime you'd like. I give Kim six months before she quits our show to do a different one. But I don't think that's what Courtney meant. I think she meant what are we gonna do that now that we're in quarantine? I mean, I only speak for myself here, but I already work out four hours a day. I don't wanna make it six because of boredom. And my credit card has a limitless balance, but online shopping gets so boring after a while. Well, I don't know about you turbo thoughts, but I'm going to do so much over quarantine. I think I'm gonna get abs. You know you have abs, right? It's part of the human body. Funny, oh sarcastic one. I mean a six pack. Maybe the kind that come in cans? But come on, Kim. We all know that you love to indulge too much kick at those well-defined abs. I can recommend a good plastic surgeon for you. It's much more practical with guaranteed results. That reminds me. I need to reschedule my Botox appointment. Kim, be reasonable. I really can't tolerate having two sisters that are gluten-free, dairy-free, and carb-free. Like, do not expect that from me, ladies. I will be enjoying my cheese and my carbs in front of both of you. <laughs> Chloe, you are so selfish. And besides, Kim, you won't last a day on a diet, but if you're serious, does this finally mean you'll take my advice and stop eating those sugary, processed, non-vegan donuts? Ooh, should I make you one of those cruelty-free, calorie-free, gluten-free, vegan, taste-free ones from that online cookbook? Stop looking at me like that, Courtney. I am going to exercise every day and redefine my apps the way crazy I, I mean Kanye likes. I was also thinking about redecorating Northwest Southeast's room. Call me crazy, but yellow? Oh, and maybe I'll get a dog for the kids. I'll name it Bible. I mean, I could probably teach it to walk itself and clean up its own poo. Or maybe it could use one of the bathrooms. Did you see that video of the dog who used the toilet? Or was that a cat? Focus, ladies, focus. I am so rude. And I'm gonna learn a new language. 
being bilingual would be like so totally amazing. I mean, you should all learn it too, so that we can all only talk in that language. Oh, right, because that is completely realistic. You're gonna do all of that without hiring someone? But the real question is, should Kim learn French or Italian? Kim, honey, put down the pasta and get out of bed. Courtney says you missed your workouts with her the past two months. Is something growing in there? I think I see mold. When's the last time you showered? Chloe, be nice to your sister. She clearly needs an intervention. Kimmy, what happened to all your big plans? How's that new language coming along? She's practicing her Italian. Her penne, her gnocchi, and her lasagna. <laughs> Girls. I don't want to talk about it. Kim, honey, did you wipe down that donut box before bringing it into the house? Seriously, Mom? No one is doing that anymore. Yeah, Mom. Well, thanks for telling me. You're welcome. We wanted to see how long it would take you to give up on the crazy. Hey, hey, hey! Put down the donuts! <laughs> I'm not feeling so great. I think I might need to self-quarantine in my room for like a week and a half in case I have corona. Mom, do you have any of those rapid tests that they sent our family in bulk because we're so wealthy and influential on social media? Boo! Boo, Chloe! Now we have to disinfect! And you know we all hate to clean, but for you, honey, anything. Uh, can we go back to talking about me? Ugh, Kim. This plague is bubonic. B-U-B-O-N-I-C. In other news, production of The Walking Dead started in October. I guess the zombie makeup won't be necessary after all of their actors drop like flies due to the coronavirus. Now all I have to say to you, Grandma, is thanks a lot for eating my thanks a lots. I thought quarantine would help me to accomplish things, not make it harder. The Property Brothers made this look so easy! Now, of course we know COVID is awful. No one has time for health during a global pandemic. That's it, I'm putting you all on you! Boom! Everything cancelled. You never understand the true value of something until it becomes a memory. I spend my time immersing myself in fictional worlds. I guess in an attempt to escape the scariness of our reality. In cage, trapped, not able to leave. I'm a prisoner of cloth within my own world. Sitting on an unmade bed, a slew of words, a severed thread, a lack of motivation starts to choke. My family and friends tried to help, but the only person I could get myself out of this rut was me. Stuck inside, stuck thinking of everything that was ripped away in just a matter of 24 hours. Maybe tomorrow will be better. Cancel, cancel. Cancel, cancel. On the very first day, 2020, I thought the year'd be fine. Now the virus is here to ruin our cheer. Still, we're not gonna whine. The streets are empty, not a car to be seen. We've got a social distance while we are in quarantine. Cancel, cancel. Activities we have planned. Cancel, cancel. Cancelled, cancelled, activities we had planned. Cancelled, cancelled, and we can't touch hand in hand. Cancelled, cancelled, how long's quarantine? Cancelled, cancelled, in our home from COVID-19. Cancelled, cancelled.